were allowed the solution pretty straightforward. The, it, it assumed the, this one, the working functions, and basically is equal to, it has, it contains a factor of beta and multiply with some other first function. So basically this, um, this method basically is this. He tried to assume this working function contained a scale beta and simply have the beta being explicitly uh, expressed like this. And let's see what is the convenience of this approach. Um, I'm going to mess up the writing here. And next time I'm going to rewrite this again for the different solution process. So assuming we have that one, so basically here we can replace all the omega with that, with that case. So here I'm going to have this beta times this, okay? And let me use this one, just use this one, okay? I think uh, using the lowercase sign, probably now be convenient, okay, lowercase sign, consistent with our vector. So now the remaining will simply replace everything. So let me do the replacement first and then see what happens. So basically this one, this one becomes this. Okay, this one becomes this. Sorry, um, you don't, you cannot scratch, uh, I can. Almost there. So from this point onward, then we can see what is the advantage. So from here, you can see at least we can uh, have all the beta be turned up, be turned out. So for this case, you can see this one. I can have the beta be writing outside here. Okay. So for this one, I can have the beta be writing here. So assuming this one, you can see they give us a little bit more convenient calculation, and in particular for this one, we can cancel beta uh, in all the calculations, so in all the terms here. Okay, in a similar way, this one, we can cancel beta from the both sides. Would that be nice? And this one, we can have beta out here. So from here you can clearly see, by assuming that form, at least from here you can see the integration inside the here, everything is the function of the geometry. And now leaving, as long as we can, for example, make a good guess or make a good candidate for this function, then we will be able to in integrate this one. Okay. Um, so again, the solution is to look for uh, what is the value of beta and what is this one. And this one basically is this. Once we know the beta and we know this one, so basically the solution is to find what is this one. And beta is that one, then we pretty much solve everything. Okay, so now uh, the solution is come to here. Um, I think I forgot one more thing. I forgot one more thing. Uh, besides, besides this formulation in the boundary condition here, I think I forgot is the equilibrium of the tau. Tau 
z x partial x plus tau z y partial y. Uh, this one is called the equilibrium of stress component. I think I forgot this one. Okay. So let me insert that one here. So the, for the stress component, we have is this partial partial x and tau z x plus partial partial y tau z y equal to zero. Then let me plug in the stress here. This one is g um, g um, in the original form in the original format. Uh, in this one. So in the original form, we haven't replaced that one, the, the working function here yet. And now we're going to replace W um, equal to beta times psi. Okay, we plug in here, then we see basically that one becomes partial partial x and g. And in this way, beta is can be out minus and partial psi, partial x plus partial partial y, g beta out here, x plus For this case, because beta is constant, so from here we can cancel, we can scale the beta from the bosom side, which uh, like this. And again, assuming if we are dealing with isotropic material, okay, and assuming the G is isotropic, in this way we can even uh, cancel the G from the bosom side. Okay, so from here, basically, we need Things, and then we can simplify here. If you look at this carefully, uh, this one is equal to, um, I make a typo here. This one should be plus. Again, there's a typo in this side here. If you continue from the top here, this should be plus. Okay, I make the typo here. Okay. So this one will lead into these functions partial square psi, partial x square plus partial square psi, partial y square equal to zero. So this is the Laplace equation, second order differential equations, and then with the appropriate boundary conditions. Okay, so that is the one. And I believe from your other classes, everyone have practiced, I, I really appreciate Dr. Kim and helping preparing this one. Assuming we know this one, okay, so here we don't need to waste time on um, the fundamental mathematics. Assuming we can access to any solution process for this one. So now to solve for base, to psi, basically we solve for this one. Again, in theory, if we know we have to solve for this one with an appropriate boundary conditions here. Then we solve for this one. By, let me call it equation one and the boundary condition one. Okay, something like this. You take this one or this one, either one. This is step one. And then step two is this. Once we solve for psi, then uh, use the equation two. Let me say here, this is equation two. to solve for beta. Okay, so that is the thinking process. And um, the, in the follow-up, I'm going to use a certain a few examples. And examples I can, I will, I'm going to demonstrate is um, for a circular shaft.
a circular shaft with the radius r. Another example is we can try uh, electric uh, circular electric shaft, and it has the uh, semi semi uh, the distance here is a. Uh, this one is um, minus a, and this is a b minus b. So this is the uh, electric electric shaft, and here the A is called the semi-major, and B is called the semi-minor dimensions, okay. And then another one we're going to look for is rectangular shaft. Okay, for a rectangular shaft, again, this is from between um, minus A to A and between minus B to B. Here, that is the dimension of the things. So, max, we can 